What's good everybody, it's your boy Ace here and welcome back to the channel. Ladies and gentlemen, we have finally done it. We are back in the Western Conference Finals. It's been 10 years since we've been there. And the last time we were there, this man led us there, Mr. Kobe Bean Bryant. Rest in peace, I know he's watching over us and that's why we have to make him proud once we get there. Whether it's against the Clippers or the Denver Nuggets, it should be against the Clippers because if they blow that 3-1 lead, that'll be hilarious. I'm actually hoping they do. But regardless, I can't wait to get into that. But this video is going to be about this game's analysis and basically the series in total of what happened. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so just like that, the series is over. It actually went by really quick. I think this series felt a lot quicker than the Portland Trailblazer series. And it also actually felt a little bit easier, potentially because obviously we were warming up in that series against the Portland Trailblazers. But regardless, the series is finished 4-1. The Lakers only lost the first game, then won four in a row. James Harden and the Houston Rockets simply just didn't have an answer. For those of you that watched the game today, I'm sure you could relate to me when I say the Houston Rockets simply just looked distraught on the court. You know, actually when the ball tipped off, I could even tell that their souls were just not in the game. It looked like it was ripped apart from them. Specifically when LeBron was just going in on that first quarter, I think by the end of the quarter, the Rockets had 20 points to the Lakers, I think 35? And that's that's remarkable. I mean, that's crazy. The Lakers were hitting every open three. The Lakers were playing incredible defense. It was just well done today. And I think people that are saying the Rockets collapsed don't understand that the Lakers actually stood up and they got up to another level. The defensive play tonight, and on top of that, the offensive capabilities that LeBron James showed, and also the playmaking abilities that Anthony Davis exhibited tonight was just remarkable. And what's ironic is James Harden actually had a really good night. He had 30 points, five rebounds, six assists with a great efficiency, but he just couldn't get it done. Mainly because Westbrook was struggling. Westbrook wasn't able to attack the basket as he usually does. And that's a lot in par with the Lakers defense. Obviously that comes from the players and also Frank Vogel for instituting a defensive schematic like he did. It's really interesting to note from this series, what I learned about the Lakers is that we are a very versatile team. When you have a player like LeBron and Anthony Davis, you're able to really change the way your game is played. You know, when we we're talking about the Portland Trailblazers, we were playing more of a big game, right? We had we played a lot of JaVale. We played a lot of Dwight Howard, obviously with AD there. And we were still athletic. We were still quick. But when you talk about the Houston Rockets, you're just not quick enough. Evidently enough, we lost game one. But credit to Frank Vogel and obviously LeBron, AD, and the rest of the team for realizing that they need to match the Rockets' pace. And they did so by substituting out Dwight Howard and JaVale McGee for more guard players such as THT they were able to increase their pace, take higher percentage three-point shots, and also just have a more dynamic team that suits against the Houston Rockets. And that led way for basically four games in a row of steamrolling the Houston Rockets. So credit to where credit is due to the players, to the staff, and also Rob Polinka for basically enlisting and making a team that is as versatile as this team became as, you know, we're getting through the playoffs. So yeah, that's basically my analysis, not really an analysis because it's very simple to understand what happened this series. Essentially, we increased the pace. Now, another thing I would love to talk about is the Houston Rockets because these guys have a lot of work to do in the off season. Mike D'Antoni has been there for four years and they haven't made the finals once. However, they have had seasons where they've had success, but just they were never able to get over that hump. When you think about a superstar like James Harden, who demands that sort of respect, that sort of field where he should be playing in the finals, he he needs more, you know? He needs some change because obviously it's not being done with a superstar like Westbrook or a superstar or an aging superstar, I might add, with a guy like Chris Paul. So it might come down to coaching. So you guys should expect a coaching change or potentially even a big trade for Westbrook out of there, who knows? The NBA has been really unpredictable as of late, so I can't say anything, but what I can say is the Houston Rockets are going to make a change coming soon. But yeah, guys, it was just a really great series. It was really fun to watch, uh, more specifically because we only lost one game, so obviously as a Laker fan, is great. But I think the most exciting part of the playoffs is essentially the next round, the Western Conference Finals. That's the real deal. And today's video, I'm not really gonna talk about that. That's gonna be for the next video. 3Z is gonna basically give the prediction of what's gonna go down, how it's gonna go down, 
that's gonna be a fun one to watch so stay tuned for that but that's about it ladies and gentlemen leave a like comment down below and as always subscribe and also leave suggestions on what you want us to talk about next 3z and i are always going through the comments and we love engaging with you guys whether it's on twitter or instagram or even the youtube comment section so just go nuts but anyways it's been real y'all ace signing out peace